Oh my goodness, it is freezing. This weather is so this evening. Honestly, the past two days, it has been so beautiful. It's blue sky, as I'll just show you. There's not a cloud in the sky. When you're sitting in like home and you're looking out, it honestly just looks like the perfect summer's day. Walk out the door. Oh my God, the cold, it is freezing. It's like minus five or, uh, no, I don't think it's that much now. I feel like it's maybe gone to zero. But yeah, it is so chilly. So hence why I've just chucked this jacket on. I don't normally wear this jacket with the kind of outfit I'm wearing today. But honestly, it's one of my favorite jackets. I got it from Zara and I'm pretty sure it's like a thermal jacket. It's so warm and just cozy. And yeah, anyway, I'm rambling. Hello, hello everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my car. Today, I thought I would do something a little bit different. I absolutely love watching these videos and I've never filmed one and it is a come drive with me. Now, I don't know how much driving I will do because my little sticky thing that I have for my camera, just, it's a nightmare. Like I just, yeah, it just ends up falling off my screen and I just, yeah, I can't get it to work. I feel like I need to order a new one. I feel like we will drive I'll try and talk if I can. We'll go and grab a coffee and just pull up somewhere and just have a big old catch up because I was saying this the other day on Instagram, I feel like we haven't had like a good sit down, just chit chat in so long. And although obviously I do sit and have a little chat with you guys in my vlogs and stuff, sometimes I end up being just a little bit chatty. And when I'm editing my vlogs, I'm like, oh God, this is so boring. This is not what people want to see. I like my vlogs to be a little bit more snappy. So yeah, that's something I'm trying to work on. Kind of like finding the balance of my vlogs of chatting, but then also like moving them along, being snappy and you kind of just actually see what I get up to. I don't know. Let me know what you like. But yeah, I just thought rather than true your ears off in a vlog, we would do a dedicated video. So for anyone that does just want to just chuck something on in the background and do you know what I mean? Just hear me telling you about my life. <laughs> anyway, let's put you. Can I put you there? That might be okay. I mean, you can't see me that well because obviously I have one of these screens there. But yeah, let's get out. Um, like I say, it's a lovely afternoon. It's one o'clock currently. And let me turn this fan down in the radio. And basically, I've got a bit of a, like, not a free afternoon. I obviously need to be doing work. But it's a bit one of those where I don't know what to do because I've got loads of try-ons and reels and stuff to do. But I hate starting things at one o'clock because the sun goes down at, like, four in the UK at the moment. So it only actually leaves me with, like, two, three, three hours and three hours to film what I need to film is just, oh, is that Mitchell's delivery? Oh, one second, guys. I feel like I'm going to have to go and turn around. I'm going to have to go and turn around. That's his delivery. Yeah, anyway, as I was saying, guys, I don't really like to start doing reels at one o'clock because the sun obviously doesn't stay around for long. So it doesn't give me a lot of time. And also, I need to hair wash and do my tan. Oh, it... Oh, now he's coming to the cul-de-sac. Oh, that is going to be Mitchell's deliverer. Yeah, that is. Let me just put on to the drive, guys. One second. Sorry, guys. I am back. <laughs> it was Mitchell's delivery. And he literally messaged me like, oh, are you going out? And I was like, yeah. And he said, oh, I've got a delivery. I don't know why I needed to even be in for that. Because I feel like it's something that could have gone generating through the letterbox but anyway i've took it and it's in the car as i was saying i've not washed my hair it's greasy shoved up um i've not done my tan and stuff and i know that sounds really like you know what i mean what's the deal but when i'm filming reels that i'm putting out on tiktok and instagram and i don't feel nice and i don't feel like i look nice it's, it's an issue for me so yeah honestly it's like a whole thing of making sure you're in um like sync with the days that you're filming so yeah i just thought rather than stay in i haven't really got an awful lot of editing to do i'm quite caught up with my emails i get another video done do you know what i mean this is the productivity we need for 2024 i feel like guys i'm gonna actually just turn this off now because it's way too bright I'm gonna have to just to do a stationary drive with me um this sun is getting in the way of me today honestly trying to film my sit down prime what didn't go to plan i ended up having to stand up because the sun was just that bad and now i want to film a drive with me because i'm like oh it's a nice day and the sun's just in my way here as well just yeah we can't win i'm gonna switch you off guys and um we'll catch up when i've got my coffee in hand brilliant start brilliant start to the video guys that's some drinkable i can't even drink that that is disgusting 
how can drinks honestly be so different like i've never known that drink to have some coffee in it's like just put three shots in Ugh. and i don't even think it's got vanilla in either do you know what it really makes you wonder as well how much baristas i know they've got a busy job but i know when coffee shops are hectic it's a lot but what worries me do you know if you have like an allergy or something is how much people do actually look at things because obviously i've asked for decaf there i don't feel like that's decaf um i've asked for vanilla there's no vanilla in that i've asked for caramel there's no caramel so i feel like she's not even read it that's i, I actually feel really annoyed with that because that's my free drinks i haven't paid for it but it's that bad it's an like indrinkable anyway let's get the questions up let's start with the house tour because i've had so many questions about this and obviously it is fast around the corner now which i can't even believe me and mitchell counted literally like two days ago how long we have left in the house we actually have six weekends guys six weekends in the house until we say goodbye to it forever which just seems so mad um i always knew it'd come around quick but i feel like it, it is going to fly around now so we're actually out of the house in six weekends so i think it brings us to the first of march that we're out of the house but we won't actually be in our house until i think it's the third week of march we've not been given an official date yet but the official date for completion was like second week of feb which is literally not long away at all but then i think there's four weeks of snagging and just yeah four weeks to sort out any problems and, and stuff like that i think basically that's going to mean we're homeless for three weeks i think mitchell's going to move to his mum and dad's and i'm going to go to mine which yeah i i'm not going to enjoy that i mean i love my mum and dad but there's just not going to be enough space for me and all my stuff and filming and obviously i'm going to have to take the cats there as well which is going to be a nightmare but basically we had no option other than to do that um because there was just issues like further down the chain and the person was going to pull out if he couldn't have a moving date in feb with our buyer so yeah obviously we didn't want people pulling out of the chain obviously with the market just being so up and down i've exchanged all the legal stuff is sorted so we do have a move date um it's just that it doesn't kind of fall in with when our house is actually ready but it's fine it's only going to be three weeks me and mitchell were thinking like shall we just go on holiday for a week um but probably not i don't know if that's going to be the best idea it's just the cat situ for me it's just the cat situ that's so hard um because our bio she's moving out for a week you know we tried to like meet in the middle so she was like look i'll move out for a week and then that means that we only have to move out for three weeks so yeah it's just the cats but i'm hoping i'm just going to keep them in like one room at my mum's um i don't really know but i don't really have any other option i don't want to take them to a cattery because that will absolutely freak them out like as long as i'm with them i think they should be okay then keep into the house just someone said have you got any themes you want in your new room's house do you know what i feel like decorating um is so hard and picking your theme because there are so many themes that i like so to actually pick one and i mean i guess you don't have to pick one but then i like the house to kind of flow so i do love like the real modern kind of looks kind of like the modern expensive grand looks that some people have in their house but then i also really like kind of more of like a country traditional look but then i also kind of like the scandy look it's so hard but i feel like ultimately we don't want to go for something too on trend i think that's the only thing we're trying to stay away from which i know some of the things that we're picking are probably a little bit trend-led but like for example do you know when there's like a trending panel in i just always feel like there's something trending or something popular at a time and i mean it's it's always the same there's always things that are going to be in and then they go out it's like how gray was really in a few years ago um i mean my mum and dad still have a gray living room it's not that it's ever gone out but things move on don't they like new trends come around all the time just like how it does with clothes so yeah i think that's the only thing we're going to st stay away from like things that are in rather than going for just like things or color palettes that are in just doing things that we like and yeah okay some things we might like maybe kind of like in or on trend for example our kitchen is like the light gray with the silver handles like the chrome handles um a quartz white white top i feel like them kitchens are very extremely popular but i also feel like they're quite timeless like they're not going to really go away um i don't ever see them like being not nice does that make sense so yeah that's what we went for for kitchen like we could have gone for something completely different but i just feel like that for me is quite a timeless kitchen it's been around for years now which kind of was one thing that put me out because i don't like having what everyone else has but then 
I do also think they're just extremely timeless and whenever I see someone with like a light grey kitchen, silver chrome finishes and like a white worktop, I'm like, oh, it's just classic. So yeah, that's what we went for for the kitchen. To be honest, there wasn't many other options, so that's why we went for that as well. And then um, we've just gone for a real nice wood floor everywhere. Obviously, a lot of people have gone for the, oh, what's the, the way it's laid? Herringbone. I see like a lot of that nowadays and don't get me wrong i love it absolutely love it like i feel like if it was up to me i'd have probably picked that but we couldn't have that choice i think they have actually introduced that choice now but anyway at the time we couldn't actually pick that choice and also mitchell was a bit like i don't like it like he's not particularly fond of it he likes straight lines he's like i'm not that fussed with it i would rather not have it um and he was like you can't go wrong with just the traditional straight lines would wood effect floor i mean it's not actual wood floor it's the antico but he's like just trust me that will never date and i mean i guess he's right because he's had that in his living room for like nine years and do you know what i mean like it's still very much like not in fashion but like it's nice so yeah i feel like we're at home we're just gonna go with what we like and that's all but the general gist of it will be like very neutral very neutral because that's the colors that i like to surround myself by like as you guys know i'm never going to be someone that has loads of colors in my home and it's not because i don't like color it's just because it's not my energy i know this sounds really weird but i feel more calm and at peace when my surroundings are just very neutral and i know to some people that might be boring and that is fine but it's whatever makes you happy and whatever you like to surround yourself by and yeah i do just prefer just a neutral home that's just me but obviously you know like a little bit of character and bits and bobs around too but generally neutral then the next most popular question by far has been wedding everything wedding i have so many questions that you guys have asked about wedding when are you getting married what made you want to get married abroad when do you plan to get married there's so much so let's just bring you up to speed with all the wedding planning because i feel like i haven't really spoken about it in a while if i'm honest there's just been so much going on that i've just not had a minute to pick that up and as you guys will probably all relate i mean not everyone because i know some guys are very hands-on but i feel like when it comes to planning a wedding it's often the woman that kind of takes the lead and, and does it not really the guy mitchell's very laid back like that he's like you plan i'll turn up <laughs> i mean he does obviously have an input and i wouldn't not want him to have an input but yeah i'd say the general gist of it is like babe you just saw it and just show me and then, and then that's it so as you guys know number one we want to get married abroad that has always been something that what well, i particularly wanted to do and to be fair when i first met mitchell when we were speaking about weddings he always has said that he wanted to get married abroad too so yeah we both aligned in that area which is really nice reason for getting married abroad i know so many people are like why are you getting married abroad why don't you get married in the uk so for me one of the main reasons that i want to get married abroad is one i can pick the weather more so than in the uk now i know you can never guarantee the weather anywhere of course but obviously if you're gonna pick somewhere that typically has a warmer climate and more reliable than the uk you're more likely to get sun on your wedding day so you know i don't want to jinx it because like you say weather can be unpredictable but let's be real if you're going somewhere that you know even like just going to the canary islands or like portugal or cyprus in the summer months it's very very rare that you're going to have a day where it's chucking it down unless you've just got freak weather so that's probably the biggest thing for us we want to guarantee our weather more and honestly in the uk like you just can't and nothing would break my heart more than waking up on my wedding day and it'd be cold and it's chucking down with rain honestly raining and dark skies it's just a total like mood drop for me so yeah that's one massive reason and mitchell said the same thing and number two i've experienced how many abroad weddings have i been to oh, i've only been to one actually it's my cousins and honestly it was the best wedding ever like it was the best wedding i've been to it was just so nice now admittedly when i did go to my cousin's wedding she actually had freak weather but the opposite end of the spectrum was like 40 something degrees it was so ridiculously hot but do you know what like 
it was still amazing even though it was so hot it was just so perfect like her venue was amazing and i just love the fact as well that everyone can go and make a bit of a holiday out of it and it's not just one day so it's like with our engagement party i feel like there was such a build-up to it and like months of planning and spending money now i didn't spend loads and loads and loads but i did spend a fair amount on my engagement party because like little things like the photo booth cake um the like, background backdrop thing you know all of that does add up but i don't know i just felt like it was only from 7 till 12 8 9 10 11 12 like five hours all the planning and money spent and then it's over in five hours now i know a wedding goes on for longer than that but i don't know like obviously a wedding you're spending so much more money than an engagement party so for me to spend that much money on one day and then it's over oh, I don't like it just I don't know I just want to have it extended I just yeah I just want it to be a celebration over a few days rather than one and have more of like a week to remember than a day because when we go abroad we'll do a nice dinner the evening before our wedding then obviously we'll have our wedding day and then the next day we'll do like a barbecue maybe a a villa if we hire it out or something do you know what i mean i just think it will just be better like obviously this is no offense to anyone that has had uk weddings and spent that amount of money on one day because i totally get it and obviously it's still worth every penny let's be real like we went to a couple weddings in the uk not last year but the year before and they were honestly so good i had such a good time and like the memories will last forever but yeah just personally for me i now have experienced what it's like when you're the host of something a lot of people have said this to me hosting an engagement party to the wedding is different because at the engagement party we had a lot of people that we hadn't seen in a long time so it was very like someone came in hello then someone else came in and hello and i just felt like i didn't even get a second to kind of just take it all in because i was that busy talking all night and it did kind of stress me out i was worried if people were enjoying it as well like that was on my mind and i was like do you know what i don't know if i, I don't even know if i want a wedding now but everyone was like look it will be so different for your wedding day especially with it being abroad as well because we'd have seen everyone beforehand and then you know it's not going to be like a massive let's catch up with everyone on the actual wedding day because i've already seen everyone so yeah i feel like i'm really rambling about this but the long and the short of it is we just have always had an abroad wedding on our mind and yeah that's just what we want to do it's not even for cheapness as well like someone said to me oh is it because it's cheaper abroad but it's actually not like it can be but it also can just be the same price as what it is you know in the uk so yeah we just want an abroad wedding and make a holiday out of it so that's that um then the next thing about wedding is and someone put wedding dress shopping plans no literally nothing so like i was saying because we have been in thailand in november then christmas came around then we've been sorting all the stuff for the move wedding planning has just completely stopped my last wedding video that i put out was when me and mum went to portugal to look at venues and i think i had touched upon this at the end of the video but i just i didn't get the virus of portugal sadly i mean that part of portugal i've not been everywhere to judge the whole of portugal i have been lisbon which i absolutely love and i would 100 percent go back to lisbon in a flash but yeah that part of portugal where we went i just i didn't get the feel for it the venue was lovely but i wasn't like blown away um so yeah i feel like that may be off the list i feel like the only way i'd do portugal is if i went to a different part like sintra is supposed to be really nice which is near lisbon i feel like that could be spenny though um so yeah portugal at the moment i think is off the list probably gonna have a look maybe next at greece like more the greek islands not mykonos and santorini because well I was gonna say they're expensive i was actually speaking to one of my friends who got married there and i didn't realize actually how like not little she paid because she still paid a lot but she was telling me like what per head she paid for her guests and i honestly thought it was gonna be like 300 pounds or something and i swear she said it was like 100 pound per person so i feel like potentially you could do it cheap in places like santorini so yeah sorry i had to like time i got off because someone walked past again i feel like we will look at maybe creek roads those kind of places next i mean look it's an excuse to go on holiday again with mum or mitchell if mitchell can get the time off um and scout out some wedding venues but yeah we just it's just kind of gone to the back of our plans at the moment which now kind of makes me nervous about 
doing it for 2025 because that's literally next year and i feel like i want at least a year and a half to plan the wedding not a year so ugh, we might have to move the date i don't know i don't know guys but then like the other reason why i did want to get married next year was because i was thinking in my head if there's a massive if with this i'm gonna underline it if i do want kids then i feel like i'm 30 how old am i this year 32 this year I will be 33 next year if I got married. The year after, I'm going to be 34. And I've kind of said to Mitchell, if we do have kids, I would kind of want to start thinking about that before I'm 35. Like, that's kind of the cutoff for me. Now, I know a lot of women do have them a lot later than 35, but, I mean, you never know until you start trying and if you can have kids anyway and, you know, if you're going to have fertility problems and, obviously, the older you get, you know, the harder it can become for a woman. So... Yeah, that was another reason but then to be honest with you guys i'm no closer to wanting kids anyway so then i'm just like am i just never gonna have kids that's another question i actually got asked um someone put what did they put how soon would you like kids i just i honestly don't know like just the thought of children it, it doesn't appeal to me i'm gonna be very honest like there is nothing about having a child that i think oh my god i would love that okay uh, wait i tell a lie the only thing about having a child that i would like is there's a few things actually now i'm thinking about it i love the relationship that me and my mum have now so i'd love to have that with a, a child of my own when i'm older because you know like when you get older and like when you think ahead in life and i think oh when i'm 50 60 let's say my mum and dad aren't around which is a good chance they wouldn't be like who am i gonna have who's gonna be there i know i've got my partner hopefully but then who else are you gonna have so that's kind of one reason why sometimes i think oh would i like children because i do love family and like i love going away with my parents now and i'd love to be able to do that with my own children hopefully in the near future but then the actual thought of having a baby that doesn't appeal to me like a baby doesn't appeal to me a toddler doesn't appeal to me when they're like five six i could cope with that a little bit more like my niece has just turned six at the moment and oh my goodness i love her to bits and i love her age and yeah i really love that but when they're any younger than that, I'll be very honest, they annoy the hell out of me. <laughs> I just can't cope with young children. Like, toddlers, babies, not for me. Yeah, but then I know everyone says it's different when you've got your own. So I don't know, guys, but I'm just... The thing is, I don't think I'll ever be that person that's like, I'm ready. I'm ready to have a child. I'm never going to get to that stage in my life, and I know that. So I feel like it'll either be a thing where we're like, come on, let's just have a kid. And then you're in it, aren't you? Or it'll just be like, no, do you know what? we've accepted we're not about kids we're just going to forever live the life just going on holiday enjoying you know it's time and that'll be it and there's no right or wrong way to do life guys i feel like this is another thing everyone kind of look at you and be like what you don't want kids what's wrong with you if you don't want kids and everyone's different like i say not everyone wants kids not everyone wants that lifestyle and there's nothing wrong with that it's more selfish right to bring a child into this life when you don't want one yeah than actually just admit that you don't want one so i don't know why people get so hung up about that sorry i'm getting really deep here but then this is another reason why i don't want kids so obviously i've been through a lot growing up bullying being probably the biggest thing like school absolutely hated them days of my life i also felt like even like my late teens to early 20s have just been such funny years of my life and I don't know, I've really been up and down during them. I feel like life's hard, like life's hard to navigate. And then I think, do I want to bring a child into that? Like it's, I don't know. But then is it just me and, and my negative? It's, no, I just think life can be hard. Life can be hard. And I don't know, I just worry about then bringing a child into that. And like, what if they get bullied? What if they struggle with like who they are and like finding a job and oh, i don't know like all these things just play in my mind so then i'm like is it just best not to have a child and then they haven't got to go through that you can see i overthink a lot that's all i'm going to say on children um what else do we have oh we've got stuff about jobs so what did you do for work before social media i have spoken about this before but if you weren't around during this time so i originally went to university to do primary teaching so yeah i do actually have a degree so I could go and be a private teacher at any time if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, basically realised that teaching just wasn't for me. 
no it just wasn't for me because i don't like kids i remember getting onto my placement and just thinking this just isn't for me no again that's a lie it wasn't for me when i was doing like year one year two year three year four mm, year five loved loved year five year five year six i could do that but any younger it, no it felt like i was child like child minding yeah it felt like I was babysitting. So yeah, that's what I did. Realised teaching wasn't for me. Completely changed career paths. Um, managed to land myself a job at a fashion manufacturer doing... Well, my job title was fashion blogging. It was a weird one. Basically a year sitting doing nothing. But I got the experience on my CV, so it was great. Um, and then I ended up working for another fashion merchandiser. And they basically produced licensed t-shirts. So I ran all the accounts like ASOS, PLT, Misguided, Boohoo for them. Worked my way up to senior merchandiser. And then got a job at Misguided for less than a year. Because then my social medias were growing. I was earning more money from doing this than in my 9 to 5. So, yeah, I handed my notice in and I have never looked back. I think I've been doing this for five to six years now, which is wild. It's definitely becoming a lot more saturated. Like, I feel like I'm really realising that now. It's it's really weird. So many more people are just influencers nowadays. And I feel like with TikTok, it's made the kind of industry a lot saturated as well. And a lot more people doing it. Um, which is interesting, but yeah, anyway, I do this full time um, So that's what I did before and I'll do this full time and then sticking to job and career talk Someone's asked what's the most favorite part of your job favorite part of my job. I would say fav my favorite part of my job is I mean there's a couple of things I'm gonna say number one working for myself and being flexible with my time having that kind of freedom almost it was something I always struggled with in a nine to five so I feel like if I didn't do what I did now I would still be self-employed I would find a job where I could be self-employed whether that be doing nails beautician hair like anything I could do self-employed I would be doing that now 100% because I just think some people in life like the employed life and, and don't mind being employed by people and having that kind of i would say more like certainty and structure maybe and some people just like to work for themselves i'm definitely someone that has to work for myself um i figured that very very early on in my life so yeah that's probably the best thing about my job like working for myself and you know having that control over my time and yeah then the next thing of course it goes without saying just the opportunities how every day is different every month is different um the brands i get to work with honestly like i have to pinch myself all the time and think how like how did i get here it, it's just it's wild so yeah i'm so very grateful and um i love it so much okay i'm gonna try and cut this short because there's only about six minutes left of memory on my camera it's running low battery as well and i feel like i've been talking for ages but we're going to move on to travel now because i've had quite a few travel questions have you got any travel plans this year where did you recently go traveling have you got a holiday booked i feel like you guys know how much i love a holiday um so we don't actually have any travel plans for this year in place which is crazy because normally by now we have like two or three holidays booked but obviously with moving house and how much that is costing us we've just kind of yeah we've just kind of held back at the moment and just gonna see how it all is but of course we most likely will be going on holiday at some point i just don't really know when or where as i've mentioned we would quite like to go greece and maybe explore wedding venues there so that could be a potential little trip even if it's just for a weekend or something um yeah i'd like to go greece i also really want to go to new york again guys i went probably like five six years ago now and i loved new york so much mitchell's never been so really really want to go back to new york we also want to go back to thailand as you guys may have saw me mitchell actually went um, to thailand for two weeks in november and honestly it was just incredible like it was just a totally different holiday it was just oh it was honestly one of the best holidays I think I've ever been on. So yeah, we're really keen to go back to that side of the world and do the other side of Thailand. Do you know what though, guys? It's just so hard with like time off. Obviously with me and Mitchell, we're both self-employed. So if we're 
having this large amount of time off neither of us are getting paid so that's what's so difficult probably more so for mitchell than me because i can still kind of get work done whilst i'm away and be uploading or have mine all pre-scheduled so it's a little easy for me but especially for mitchell like for him to have a month off it's not that he wouldn't be able to have that time off it's just how much it costs him so yeah ideally i feel like we'd need four weeks of travel and what i would love to do is go two weeks and do the other side of thailand and then maybe do two weeks in bali by the way if anyone's been by let me know how long you went for and how long you think is a good time to go for like could we do two weeks thailand and then a week in bali because i have heard that bali is probably more of like a a chill holiday a lot of beach clubs and that kind of vibe Whereas Thailand, I feel like, is very, like, adventurous and I feel like you can explore and do things in Bali. But I've heard Thailand's a little bit more on that level of, like, adventure, if that makes sense. So, yeah, let me know. But we'd love to do that. I'd love to go to Bali because it looks beautiful. Um, honestly, there's just, there's so many places I want to go. I still need to go and see my family in New Zealand. Um, and then I feel like if I was going all that way, um, I'd probably nip in Australia on the way back. Like, I'd love to go to Australia oh there's just so many places to travel isn't there guys it's just money time off and yeah it's difficult but we will get there we will tick off all the main places we want to do hopefully the next few years but yeah no travel plans at the moment unfortunately so guys i literally ran out of storage on my memory card but yeah anyway i'm gonna end it here because i feel like i've been chewing your ears off for ages anyway hopefully that's brought you up to speed with everything that's going on at the moment we've ticked off wedding we've ticked off moving and we've also ticked off travel plans for the year so i feel like that's a big chunk of things covered and you know i've brought you up to speed with um sorry it's not really been an actual drive with me it's more been a stationary in my car catch up <laughs> but all the same i really hope you've enjoyed this super chatty catch up video and um, make sure you hit subscribe if you are new here thank you so much for watching guys i hope you're all doing well and i shall see you all in my next video bye